Good morning, my name is Victoria Pau. I'm from the Leibniz Rechenzentrum in Garching near Munich and I want to talk about the project GeoKW and trying to get precise to run on SuperMOOC NG with containers and spec. The project GeoKW is um, a collaboration between the TU Munich, the Universität Stuttgart, the Leibniz Rechenzentrum and the Stadtwerke München, as well as the RGU, the Referat für Gesundheit und Umwelt, and the LFU, the Bavarian Landesamt für Umwelt. And um, the simulation is about coupling a hydrogeologically simulated groundwater flow with energy optimization tools. And we want to get this to run on a large scale on SuperMOOC NG, that is our HPC system at uh, LSE. And it's currently the 15th place in the top 500, that's 6,500 nodes, and uses OmniPath as interconnect. Our software stack is pFloatRun, a Fortran based code for simulating the groundwater flow and herbs, which Leonardo Desky already talked about before. And we use Precise and Petsy and Boost and HDF5, MPI, Python and Parmetis for the meshing parts. And so this relatively complex software stack has to be installed and maintained for many partners who all want to probably work on the system at some point. And so because on an HPC system like SuperMOOC, you do not have, have internet access. Um, we are trying to find a good way to share our software stack among many project partners. So not every person has to install the things manually themselves. And so um, one approach for this is the spec package management system, which is used on most HPC systems currently and provides modules for quickly loading different installations of different types of software. And the other is HPC containers like Charlie Cloud or Singularity. And um, they give you the opportunity to share a user-defined software stack in a flattened image among different project partners. And they uh, use their own user namespace so as to not interfere with the whole system. So maybe some of you have already used SPAC before. It's actually quite straightforward also to use on your own laptop or workstation. So you can um, install SPAC by using a git clone or by getting a tarball. Then you have to um, set up with a simple script. And then you can use relatively straightforward commands, like install commands, to say what you want to have installed on your system. And then it will fetch the source code and we we'll use the recipes in its package YAML files to build all the dependencies that you need and will give you an installation on your system. For example, if you type spec install xsdk, it will install the xsdk software development kit, which will give you precise and pfloatrun and some other useful codes and it will all compile on your system, which will take a few hours. So as I tried the, to install this from scratch, I think it took about 20 hours but you don't actually have to make um, a lot of stuff yourself because it will just take care of the whole installation process for you in the optimal case. But on the HPC system, things are a little bit more complicated because you want to install the um, system, things like MPI or HDR5, you typically don't want to install yourself because there are already optimized versions for the system pre-installed, so you want to use those. And also you don't have internet access, so you will actually have to fetch some of the source codes by hand. So then you have a certain idea what exactly you do want to install. So you, for example, you know that Boost must be a new version, newer than 1.65, and you need a recent version of Petsy and the MPIs of the different um, dependencies should match and they should be the MPI that is optimized for the system. And uh, for example, I also found out that for HDF5, 
for using the pflowtran, you need to have an HDF5 that is compiled with Fortran and high-level libraries. And you think, okay, most of this is probably on the system, more or less, so it should be relatively straightforward to combine these and get an installation of pflowtran and precise on the system. But as it turns out, it's not quite so easy. So um, getting exactly the right matching dependencies on the system was not straightforward. It was actually quite a lot of work and spent many hours compiling, recompiling certain things only to find out that then they don't match with the other dependencies. And so on the HPC system, for someone who's not willing to invest quite a lot of work, I would not recommend this approach. We did get it to run in the end and provide a module for Precise 2.20 compiled with GCC8 and Intel MPI on the system now. And I hope this will be sufficient for our users. But if you want to do this themselves, then you have to be prepared for quite a lot of work, probably. And um, so I wanted to also try a different approach which is a little bit experimental at the moment, but I think is very promising for this kind of workflow where you have many partners who want to share a evolving software stack. And um, so what are containers? Maybe some of you have already worked with it. Uh, some people describe it like a lightweight virtual machine, which is not exactly correct because they actually share the same kernel and just the higher level OS functions and um, the file system are separate in a container. And um, with HPC container workflows, you can create an image, for example, from a Docker file, and this can get flattened and simply uploaded. And then you can have your own file system. And when you run this, you will have your own user namespace and uh, the root of your file system will be your container image and then you have your own software stack on the HPC machine. Um, so what you do on your local machine is you have a recipe, for example, a Docker file. You build this into a container. We can then test and uh, play around with this image, see if the things work as you expected, and then package your image into a file. You can then upload that file onto the HPC system and unpack it. And then you can bind certain system directories that contain modules and libraries. And then you can also um, take a, a shell inside your image and you can rebuild things if necessary and then run your simulation on the HPC system. For a quick idea what this would look like, so in, in this picture here you see that you have the container with the new code and all the dependency and the environment like variables that you need. You can also have some scripts already packaged in your image, which is actually recommended. And you can also bind um, the hardware system libraries um, from below that are already present on the host system. And you can either use an interactive user shell or use the runtime environment to execute scripts in the container. So you do an s-alloc, for example, so allocate some machines on SuperMOOC via Slurm. You load the module Charlie Cloud, which is a HPC container runtime, and then you can do an MPI execution with um, several processes, run the container image, and the minus B flag will tell which um, points in the module system, the directories you have to bind. Uh, MP Bionic, for example, is the name of the image and the test SNG SH is the script that you want to run inside the container. And um, this, these steps can actually then um, be executed by any team member as long as they have uploaded the image file and they will have the exact same software stack and they don't have to recompile anything or get dependencies. And this is very fast workflow, so you'll just have to upload one file and once everything is correctly built, it's reproducible for everyone involved. So what HPC container systems are there? You probably have heard about Docker. 
which is the most well-known and most used container runtime environment around, but it's not really suited for use on a high-performance computing system because it runs as a root daemon and this will clash with the slurmd, which is also a root daemon, and they um, will not really be com compatible in terms of allocating resources on the system. And also, if you run the, the Docker daemon, it's hard to associate the container process with the spawning user. And so it's hard to do something like accounting for the use of your, um, but of your computing budget and also to not to oversubscribe the system and to something like job scheduling. So Docker is currently not really fit for use on HPC systems. Two um, container runtimes that are actually made for use with an HPC system are Singularity and Charlie Cloud. Uh, Singularity was up until now not allowed on SuperMook NG due to security concerns but it may be allowed in the future. And uh, Charlie Cloud is that what we currently have available on the system and which we used for our tests. So how do you build a container for SuperMook NG? What we use for Charlie Cloud is actually the Docker file uh, format. So you get a base OS. In this case, you see up there the Ubuntu Bionic image, which you can fetch from the Docker hub. And then you can use apt-get to install a lot of dependencies to get things like Fortran and Python and zip and less and git. And also very importantly for getting MPI to run, you need libraries for Fabric and PSM and InfiniPath. And then you can st install your own MPI uh, you have to make some directories to use as mount points for the system directories, as we saw, self saw before, um, like this LSE system and user lib64 for getting PSM and the spec modules. You can copy scripts from outside the directory where you're building your container, so you can prepare those. Then you can install presize set your environment variables needed to access the libraries and you can install the other software that you need for example in our case pflowdron and herbs then what you do is you type this command to build your image then you make uh, you get a tar file this tar file you copy to supermukng using scp or rsync and then you can unpack that image to get a directory. You can actually, if you want, change that directory um, or you can start your Charlie Cloud runtime environment and um, get a shell, like here bin bash, inside your uh, container. Or you can execute the script that is inside your container and you can also if you have allocated some Slurm nodes, you can use MPI to run this software that you have inside the container in parallel. Here you see a screenshot from a shell running inside the container. So you see up there, we have an OPT Precise, Precise 2 build, which is actually um, inside a container built on this uh, image made from the docker file and uh, running the C test, precise test inside this container and you see that all the solver dummies can be built successfully and um, the communication runs. You can actually have in two separate terminals run the different solver dummies and they will find each other, they will communicate. So all these tests with the containers were successful. And uh, the next step for us will now be to see if we can make the herbs p floatron coupling work in the same way. So the takeaways would be that spec, in my experience, is great for installing full dependency trees on your local machine. But using spec for building your own software on an HPC system when you're not the admin 
is not that trivial, so it can be quite a bit of manual work. But if you want to use Precise on SNG, it has a module now using the optimized Intel MPI. And um, we personally, I find that containers are a very promising solution for sharing complex software stacks among different project members or any user which is interested in using your uh, software stack. And so we are very curious, or I personally am very curious, to see if the performance with containers will hold up to the manual installation. And I hope to give some update on that soon. If you want to read up on our software or on SPAC or using Charlie Cloud, here's some links. And I'll be happy to get some questions on this topic. Thank you.